In a previous video, we computed the following indefinite integral using partial fractions. For here, I want to compute that same indefinite integral using a trig substitution. So, as before, we're to factor 4 out of the denominator twice to get a 1 16th. Then, we're just going to take a general form of this indefinite integral that's left over. So, I'm interested in the indefinite integral of x squared over x squared minus r squared quantity squared with respect to x. Now, if I want to do a trig substitution, if my x squared minus r squared was inside the square root, the substitution will be using a secant or a cosecant. Because I have a square on the outside, okay, I'm allowed to reverse the order, so we can multiply by a minus 1 on the inside, and then when we square it, nothing happens. So we're going to rewrite it as r squared minus x squared quantity squared. When we have this, okay, we can use our usual substitutions using sine or cosine. So I'm going to let x be equal to r sine of u, then dx is equal to r cosine u du, our r squared minus x squared quantity squared. Well, we're going to put in r sine theta for x. So we're going to wind up with an r squared cosine squared u, and then we square it. So this term is going to turn to r the fourth cosine of 4u. We substitute. That gets us to this expression here. So we note what's going to happen. When we collect our r's, we're going to have just one left, 1 over r. We're going to have sine squared over cosine cubed. So sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. 1 over cosine is secant. Now. I want to substitute out to get everything in terms of secant. So the way I do that, we know it. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. I divide through by cosine squared. That gives me 1 plus tan squared, which is sine squared over cosine squared. It's equal to 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared. Now I can write tan squared as secant squared minus 1. And that's how I get to secant cubed minus secant. Now. For the next part, we need a special integration by parts. So that's going to be an integration by parts, part 6. And that's going to be the indefinite integral of secant cubed of u. So we look that up, and that's going to be given by this expression here. 1 half secant u tan u plus 1 half natural log absolute value of secant u tan u. For the indefinite integral of secant u, that's given by natural log of absolute value of secant u plus tan u. We multiply both by 1 over r and then add our constant. So what's left? We just have to substitute out the u to get something in terms of x. Now, our expression collapses to two terms. We have the x is equal to r sine of u, or u equals the inverse sine of x over r. To get our secant and tangent, I'm going to work with a right triangle. So I'm going to fill in the angle u, then the sine of u, which is equal to x over r, you can think of as being opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite leg will have length x, the hypotenuse will have length r. And by the Pythagorean theorem, the adjacent leg will have length squared of r squared minus x squared. We can work out secant and tangent now. Secant is 1 over cosine. So that's equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. And that's going to be equal to r over square root of r squared minus x squared. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we get x over square root of r squared minus x squared. Now we can substitute into our expression. So for the first part, we can cancel the r's. Then I'll have 1 half x over r squared minus x squared. And then I'm going to put the x squared first, so we're just going to switch the order and bring in a minus sign. So that gets us to this term here. For the term with the logarithm, okay, a few steps. First off, note we have a common denominator, so I can think of this as x plus r. Now, if we factor what's under the square root, that's r minus x times r plus x, so we really have a square root of r plus x on the top if we take one out of the bottom. So we get to here. Now, logarithm rule. If we have an exponent, 
and here are the exponents one half, we can bring that down in front. So it turns our one half into a one fourth. Finally, I want to switch the position of the x plus r and the x minus r. So that's introducing an exponent of minus one to switch. So I'm going to have x minus r over x plus r, but the penalty is to change from minus one fourth r to plus one fourth r. Then, if you go check the previous video, this is going to match what we got before. So that's going to be the check on our work. Now, if we go back to the original problem, okay, we factor out 4 twice to get 1 16th. We have this integral. Here we have r equal to 3. So when I substitute, we wind up getting this answer here.